Bill Henshaw here again, your friendly local constitutional coup in California. And some exciting news coming in the next video, which I won't fully know until tomorrow, with the case called SEC versus Jarkizi out of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. And I think they're going to do what the Fifth Circuit did and throw the SEC out on the street. But this video, we're going to be talking about defenses that you have across the board in any situation. It doesn't matter whether it's the franchise tax board, you know, the DMB, you know, child support, mortgages, evictions, whatever. And a big key here is the money issue. If you realize what's going on, and trust me, people, I didn't get this back in the day either. I was as ignorant as you were coming out of high school out of Washington, D.C., for crying out loud. But when you understand, you know, the big deal about the money issue <clears throat> is that, you know, they, and I mean the corporation behind the scenes, the New York banks and the mortgage people and all of them, can create money out of debt. Then there. We can't do that. And yet these are agents of our agents in the de facto national socialist government. We have the same power, and you will learn, I believe, how to get there and be able to do the same thing and or get a lot of cases summarily thrown out because they decide not only can't prove jurisdiction and venue, they don't know how to define dollar. Wow. That's how big a deal this issue is. And it's across the board. Because if they can't define dollar, and for those of you that don't know, uh, you know, that if defined at all by the President of the United States acting as commander of the of the armed forces. Uh, for more information uh, on that and other things, send me an email, court at gmail.com. But in effect, if you use Federal Reserve notes and discharge the obligation, <clears throat> the debt still due, <clears throat> and you have volunteered yourself into <clears throat> a martial law system pursuant to the non-existent 14th or amendment. You'll learn more about that too. <clears throat> now send me an email if you went in court at gmail.com. And I think our friends on the U.S. Supreme Court are now wrapping up their fourth term of an all-out assault on the administrative state are going to have our backs on a lot more of our issues come October than they've had uh, in any recent memory. You may have to go back to the 19th century, although I'm not sure about that part, but could be. But the money issue is a big deal because what does Article 1, Section 10 say? No state shall... Make anything but gold or silver coin a tender and payment of debt. Plain, simple English. I would say today's fourth and fifth grader would even understand that, but given all the crap that's going on in schools these days with the woke agenda, transgenderism, heterosexuality, ain't <clears throat> the three R's are out the back door. So who knows what the hell they're teaching in the schools these days. That's another area that I'll be taking a long look at and trying to help out school boards across the country to get back on the right track here. So that said, you know, that money issue is what it is. And the big deal here is when you use their depreciated currency, you get into their courts and they never tell you this, even when you put a bill of particulars in nature and cause of the activation, because you use them. And they think all you have is an equitable interest in your property, including real estate. You don't own it. Wow. And yet the difference, in, and this will come, you'll understand this readily, because even if we use paper money in our case, it supposedly represents our property and our time and labor. I mean, my goodness. It's hard to imagine. The black folk bastards can overlook that. And prosecutors and mortgage bankers. That's our property. We have creator endowed and alienable rights, and they don't. But that's the way the just us system works. And that's what it is we need to stop. It. More ways than one. And it works. A couple of episodes from what I've done, 
Well, I got arrested on Memorial Day 20 odd years ago when I was still working, and I didn't have the weekends off, so I had to post bail, which I would never have done otherwise. Same question, defined all. But I knew if I stayed in jail, they would fire me at my job, even though I had a really great record with it. They didn't like me because of what I do on the outside, telling people like you about the Constitution, laws, and history of the United States. So, okay, I go in there and I get convicted. <clears throat> Not surprising in a system that specializes in directed verdicts of guilt. And I show up a bit later at the office of the clerk of court with a friend. And I hand the girl four or five rolls of silver quarters. How many will it take to pay the fine? She gets real upset, goes in the back room for 20 to 30 minutes, and comes back and says, we can take them at face value. Silver coins. Oh, I'm ready for her. I said, fine, sign this document. And she did, because I knew what she was going to say, so I had prepped the document. She signed it, and I whipped it right off to the local dumbass here, demanding to be prosecuted for a willful failure to pay a fine. 20 plus years later, I'm still waiting. They can't do it because, you know, if they take paper money, they're conceding that in my case that California is not a sovereign independent state admitted into this union. And that's true wherever you live across the country, especially with states that were admitted before 1859 when this union still existed. So the second time I had a chance to get in there, I got arrested for jaywalking. Eight. Well, the good news about that, by the way, I wasn't involved with the crew that arrested me in the library. I've talked about it in my South Carolina case years ago. The whole crew may not have been the same, uh, but the idiot leading it was. I knew it. Uh, so I didn't have that. Uh, and I get the ticket, and I go to court and all that. And the traffic commissar who knows me, I've beaten DMB uh, six, seven, eight times in his quote unquote court. Uh, when the accuser, the law enforcement thug, doesn't show up for trial, it gets dismissed in the interest of justice. You ever hear of one of those bastards getting cited for a willful failure to appear and called into court and made the answer for it? Me neither. But that's what they do to us all the time. In any event, this bastard sent the case across the street to the real court. And that's not one either. It's another administrative tribunal. And I got actually a pretty decent guy for a change. And I told him at the outset, I can't participate here because that'll volunteer me into jurisdiction that I know that you don't have. So the cop comes in and he was a nice kid, by the way. I'll talk more about that. Maybe another video, but, and he told him what happened, and I was jaywalking and this, that, and the other. And so the judge convicts me, quote unquote, and he adds up the charges in the fees and says, well, it come out to about $110, $115, I don't remember exactly, without missing a beat. Good. In that case, please define dollar within the meaning of section 6850 of the California Government Code, which defines the money of account of the state of California. As the dollar cent mill. Without missing a beat, I said, and that goes back to being acted directly from the political code of 1852, when California first came into the Union, for those of you that don't know, and without skipping a beat. And I said, at that time, you could find the definition of dollar in Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution for the United States, not to mention. The Coinage Act of 1792. Shut him up again. And six or eight years later, I haven't received a bill for that one. And I'm not going to. And you won't either, because if they can't define dollar, they're committing more acts of treason, which they've already done and getting you in a court that you instinctively know doesn't have jurisdiction. When you realize that's an administrative tribunal, that's when it gets really interesting. Send me an email, by the way, youwinningcourt at gmail.com, and, and I can show you how to get my materials and learn all of this. And it might not take right away, and it didn't with me, by the way. I was head of the class of ignorant back in the day, 
so then Steve and I volunteered into the fucking Vietnam War or in the, the Marine Corps at the height of the Tet Offensive in the Vietnam War when I was 19 years old. And I got educated right outside of Washington, D.C., then learning of this. Ain't thought I wised up. And you'll learn more about the history of wars and things on other videos that will be talking specifically about that. It's going to be nauseating to put it politely. So that said, you know, this is how we fight back and assert our rights. And now we have justices on the Supreme Court that are going to have our backs. They've been in the midst of a four-year all-out assault on the administrative state that threatens you every day. And now with what they've just done uh, with the case uh, out of South Carolina, where Justice Thomas, and this is a separate concurrence, a solo concurrence, but you know he's speaking for at least all the conservatives here, if not all nine of them, you know, directly assailed uh, Brown versus Board of Education uh, almost on the exact day, the exact day 70 years ago, it was decided by the Supreme Court in 1954. And yes, I'm reading between the lines here a bit, and I admit I am, but I'm pretty damn good at doing it. And it's clear to me that the Supreme Court knows what the real problem was with that. And like tool integration, what's the problem? There's a huge one because to do that, they had to invoke federal regional martial law rule of the non-existent 14th Amendment. So I'm waiting today, uh, this is the uh, night, and tomorrow the 10th, I expect them to come out. But uh, what I thought was a long overdue decision in a case called SEC v. Jarkasy out of the Fifth Circuit, where the Fifth Circuit threw the SEC out on the street, just like the Supreme Court is going to do. And they may go a bit further in this opinion than I thought. You'll get a video about this immediately. Uh, well, probably Tuesday, uh, after I find out what they said and I take a long look at it. And I'll explain to you what they did and why they did it. And the next term is going to be even better. And I've been saying that since the start of their last term in 2023. Uh, and for a variety of reasons and to learn more about that send me an email you went in court at gmail.com and I'll get the information about that uh, if I do say so I'm divinely blessed and it's a lot more than just memory here it's perspective and it took me a while to get it it will take you a little while although instinctively you know there's a lot wrong with this just us system <clears throat> And that's my job to help get you up to speed quickly. So when you get my materials, you get complimentary phone consultations. And also I answer questions going back and forth by email, which can be better at times with written answers. And you can always record the phone calls, by the way. I'll encourage my people to do that. And that way, if things don't go well, you can send a copy of that to your local state attorney general and let them file against me for practicing law without a fucking license. After what I did to them in South Carolina, they should know better eight years ago. So that said, it's all exciting and getting a lot better. And it's across the board. Nothing they do is right. Absolutely zero. That's an astounding statement. And yet I can prove it and you will learn how to do the same thing. Send me an email. You went in court at gmail.com. And there's lots of other issues to go with the money issue too. It isn't, but on its own and virtually without more. That makes our case, because if we're not in a sovereign, independent state, where the hell are we? You'll find out. Send me an email. You went in court at gmail.com. It ain't very pretty. And these New York banks know exactly what I'm talking about. What's happened in the United States. We used to have a federated Republican form of government of defined and limited powers. What do we have today? Democracy. Ain't. <clears throat> Otherwise known as three walls, two feet, voting on what's for dinner. Otherwise known today as an elective despotism. We want to get the hell rid of that as quickly as we can and get back to our original government. And no, it wasn't a perfect government, but we can go from there and make changes and do it right. That's the best remedy not only that we have, but for you, your children, your posterity. That's how important this is, and that's why I've worked so hard over the course of my fifth decade now. And I made my own personal decision a long time ago not to have a family, and I'm the last of the line that love to hear that in Washington, D.C. 
But I said to myself, if I can't put a family first, I have no business having one. By the way, the cookie is I actually hear really interesting uh, film series. It's called uh, John Adams. It's uh, and I'll think of the guy who plays John Adams if I can do it. But it's a it's a, a series, and it talked about his time when he was in France in the 1770s with Franklin and Jefferson, and they were trying to get France to help out, you know, so we could break away from England and set up the United States. And the big deal there was that Adams knew just as I did, about families. But the problem was he had four young kids with his wife, Abigail, at the time, and they suffered a lot for the months that they were over in France. And I'm going to get a book. There's a book of correspondence between he and his wife, Abigail Adams, and see if she understood what he was doing was more important. And I believe one of their children died, too, and another one got sick with cancer, which is probably unrelated to that but may have not got the treatment, whatever the treatment would have been available in that era, and passed away, I think. So it, was, it cost him a lot to be over there. But he knew it was more important, and that was the correct decision, as strange as it may seem on the surface. But that said, send me an email. You wrote much more about all I talked about today. You went in court at gmail.com. That's why I'm going to be 76 year old, six years old later this year. Life is still ahead of me. That's how good it is and how good I hope I can make it for you too and your family and your posterity. Wow. So that's a demean email. You went in court. You know, you know, subscribe, like the videos, tell your friends, get the word out. The quicker we take affirmative action here, not the 14th Amendment kind, the quicker we get rid of these bastards and set our lives straight once again. Thank you.